Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. You know, Shan, both of us do a fair amount of writing for our jobs, and I don't know about you, but sometimes it can be a challenge to get in the zone and devote enough uh, uninterrupted time to just you know writing a simple news release. Sometimes I have to kind of bargain with myself and say, if you sit down and write this, I will take you to Soulcraft afterwards for an iced coffee. <laughs> Uh, our guest today, though, apparently does not have that problem. She wrote an entire book. That's right. And Jonathan, you know, I'm going to have to start the rewards program at Soulcraft when I write something. I don't <laughs> think I'm as nice to my inner self as you are. But uh, today, I'm just really excited. We're talking to Tennessee Tech Associate Professor and published author, Dr. Monique Ducton. She's going to tell us about her new book, Daughters of Muscadine, and maybe we'll even get her to give us a few tips for conquering the old writer's block. I think I need her autograph. Later, we're going to be joined by a proud Golden Eagle alumnus, Lee Gatz. Now, Lee has not only one, but two Tennessee Tech degrees, and get this, he was also student body president winner of the Dairy Berry Award, that's Tech's highest student honor, and the former student trustee on the Tennessee Board of Regents. Now he's gonna talk with us more about his years on campus and catch us up on his life and outstanding career today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to catching up with him. We had uh, classes together as, as students at Tech. He's been graduated for more than a decade now, but when I told my coworkers, Shan, that we'd be talking with him, Every single one of them knew exactly who he was. That just gives you a window into his impact on this campus. He is definitely impressive. So let's get right to today's interviews. Up first, it's our conversation with Dr. Monique Dutton. Our next guest is the subject of a glowing book review in the Nashville scene, but we get to claim her as one of our own right here in Cookville. We're talking to Tennessee Tech associate professor and award-winning author and poet, Dr. Monique Ducton. Dr. Ducton teaches literature and creative writing here at Tennessee Tech. She also leads a community writers workshop at Plenty Downtown Bookshop in Cookville's West Side, and she poured all of those experiences into writing her debut full-length book, Daughters of Muscadine, which released last November from University Press of Kentucky. And uh, I want to read this review from the Nashville scene. They said, quote, the links among these touching stories are subtle but effective, accumulating in our minds as we read. Thanks to Ducton's detailed command of her setting and the compassionate clarity she brings to her narrators, we easily grow attached to a wide range of Muscadine's black daughters and sons. Dr. Ducton, welcome to College Town Talk. Thanks, Jonathan and Shan, for inviting me. Um, I'm really excited to be here and talk about my work. Well, Dr. Ducton, I want to start by talking about the decision to write a book because it seems to me like the creative equivalent of running a marathon. <laughs> uh, this is 144 pages of your thoughts and ideas woven together to tell a story. And for me, and I, I'm sure some of our listeners, that sounds incredibly daunting. Uh, you know, writing a, a short story, sure, uh, an essay, no problem, but a full-length book, I, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. So can you share with us about that creative process? I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, how many uh, weeks or, or maybe months did you devote to the writing? Um, you know, do you, have a, do you have a system of writing where it's maybe a little bit each day or did you, did you knock out large portions of the book in one sitting? How did that work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in terms of the writing process, I tried not to think of it as a book at first, because as you said, it's a very daunting task. So what I did was I went story by story. And um, I did all of my higher education in English. So I studied creative writing each time. And the some of the stories from my book I wrote when I was a student. So I did my master's, um, my MFA down at Georgia College. And I wrote a couple of the stories for workshops that I took down at Georgia College. Then I went on to my PhD program at Southern Mississippi. And I wrote another couple of stories uh, for those workshops. And then the second half of the book was written um, when I started working here at Tech. So it's a years long process. And I just kind of went story by story. And once I had about five or six of them, I started thinking about how they could fit together. Um, into a book. So I, I think it's a matter of just kind of pushing yourself to write a little bit at a time, even if it's just, you know, for a few minutes each week or each month, 
talk about using your education for your future benefit in a very creative way. That is the most unusual story I've ever heard in compiling a book. I can't imagine being in college, writing a story. And like, if your future self told you, hey, this is going to be in a published book in your future, like it'd probably be more pressure <laughs> than you could handle at the time. It, 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 would, it would just add an extra level. But to, to go back in time and think that way is outstanding. Okay, now, Dr. Ducton, now that we've talked about your unusual writing process, tell us about the book itself. Now, as I understand it, Daughters of Muscadine is a collection of these nine short stories about African-American women from a fictional small town in Georgia, and it is modeled after the town where you grew up. So this book is already getting great reviews, as Jonathan alluded to, and I'm going to read one from Midwest Book Review, which said, and I'm quoting here, as a novelist, Monique Ducton has a genuine and enviable flair for portraying the extraordinary and the revealing in the everyday lives of ordinary women. What a powerful review that is. I mean, that really drives me to say, I want to meet these women. I want to read about these women. Now, for those who haven't gotten a chance to read the book yet, tell us more about these stories and what you hope readers will discover in your pages. Okay, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it's a collection of nine short stories. Each story is intended to be read individually, but when you look at them together as a collection, you can kind of see how there are certain themes that go across multiple different stories. So one thing is this sort of theme revolving around people who want to be connected to other people that they're estranged from. So for instance, in one of the stories, it's about a middle-aged woman who comes in contact with a daughter that she gave up for adoption 20 years before. Um, so she wants to have that connection with the sort of lost daughter. Um, in another story, we see two sisters who are estranged from each other and they come back together after their grandmother passes away. So it's a collection of stories. They're all mostly set in the same town except for one outlier, but most of them are set in a small town called Muscadine, which is not a real town. It's kind of modeled after my hometown where I grew up. I'm from North Georgia, just north of Athens, a town called Commerce. And so I had kind of my town in mind when I was writing some of the stories. So for instance, there's a local park uh, called Hurricane Shoals that I used to go to as a child. And I was thinking of that a lot when I was writing some of the scenes uh, for some of the stories. So for instance, in one of the stories, there's a character who drowns at a shoals. And I was thinking of that park from my childhood as I was writing that one. Dr. Ducton, as we are taping this conversation today, it, it is the start of Black History Month, and so much of your writing and career has been dedicated to lifting up what are often previously unheard stories and perspectives that shine a light on being Black in the South and in small town rural spaces. Uh, in fact, I, I understand you teach a course on African American literature here at Tech, and uh, I believe even studied African-American protest writers in your PhD work. So when you think uh, back on your, your years in Georgia to your time here in Cookville today, uh, where have you seen progress in terms of telling those stories and having them be heard and uh, appreciated and listened to? And where do you still see obstacles? Yeah, um, I grew up, uh, as I said, in small town Georgia in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I've always been a reader. I would say when I was very young, I didn't read a whole lot of diverse literature. And I do think that things have really come a long way, especially in the past 30 years or so. We're starting to see more stories uh, being published by writers of color, um, lots of great stories coming out of the LGBTQ community. Also disability studies is a big uh, category of literature now. So we're seeing writers who come from diverse backgrounds. And I think it's wonderful because it helps us to try to understand perspectives of people who are different from us. Um, in terms of how far we have to go, I think it's a struggle for all writers, especially if you're wanting to publish your work. Um, you have to face a lot of rejection uh, sometimes to get your book published. Um, I started out publishing in a lot of magazines um, and with literary magazines, uh, most of them, they have a very limited amount of space. So most of what uh, is submitted to them is rejected. It's not to say that the writing is bad, it's just that they can only take a limited amount of stories. So I always tell my students, 
Um, you're writing for the writers who are going to understand where you're coming from and be open to hearing what you have to say. Uh, think about your audience and don't focus so much on rejection or people who don't want to be open to what you're telling them. So have a certain audience in mind and write for that particular reader. I love that advice because for any of our listeners who maybe have aspirations or even a tiny hidden dream in the back of their mind that they would love to be an author, to understand that that rejection process is something that happens for every author. Like they, they will tell you a whole slew of rejection stories to where it made them better. It made them stronger. It made them persistent and kind of an overcomer. So I, I love that, that you can say, you know, you even started in magazines and you built to where you could have this book published. And that I think that grows a deeper appreciation for it when you actually have that dream happen. Uh, in the time we have left, Dr. Ducton, uh, let's talk about your work inside the classroom. Now, you obviously have some very lucky students that get to learn from you here at Tennessee Tech. Clearly, writing is your passion and your gift, but when did you know that you also wanted to teach it? Yeah, great. That's a wonderful question. Um, I knew I wanted to be a teacher when I was in graduate school. So through my MFA program and my PhD, I taught part-time at the schools that I attended. And it was always a wonderful experience to teach students who were passionate about writing. Um, my workshops are, my creative writing classes are workshop based. So what that means is that students bring in their own poetry, their own stories, their own essays, and we discuss them as a group. So we're pointing out things that we think the students can do to improve, but then we're also offering encouragement. And so whenever I'm teaching, I am inspired by things that we talk about in class, and we all kind of bounce ideas off of each other. So it's a very creative process. Well, I, I know you say that you find inspiration uh, in teaching. I think there's a lot of tech students who find inspiration from you. Um, Dr. Ducton, we, we appreciate your time today. We like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? We have a strong creative writing department here at Tech. We're very small. Um, there are only three of us. A shout out I'd like to give to Dr. Pelton and Dr. Hoover, the other two professors who teach in the creative writing department. So we're a very small department. We don't have very many students, but I think one strength of it is that we always celebrate each other's success, right? So for instance, my colleague Aaron Hoover just had a poetry collection um, that came out right around the same time as my book. So we gave a reading here on campus and a lot of our students and other faculty came to support us. So it's a very supportive environment. I also like that the teaching load is very manageable here. So I teach a three, three, three courses in fall and three in spring, which I think frees up a lot of extra time for me to be creative and for me to work on my story. Well, I, I know uh, all about uh, being in a, a smaller department or a smaller major at Tech. I was a political science major. And the, the relationship that you build with the professors, the 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 one on one uh, opportunities and and the the relationships that you form with your peers I think I, I see you know great benefit to being in those like you say those smaller programs, Dr. Ducton thanks so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you, Jonathan and Shan. I really appreciate it. And for our listeners, Daughters of Muscadine is available now wherever books are sold. You can also learn more about Dr. Ducton on her website moniqueducton.com. Now, with this next guest, they say college is what you make it, and our next guest made his years at Tennessee Tech really count in a major way. Now, today we're talking to former student body president, the 2013 winner of the Derry Berry Award. Now, that is Tech's highest student honor, in case you didn't know, and a former student trustee on the Tennessee Board of Regents, the infamous Lee Gatz. Now, Lee is a native of Livingston, Tennessee, but today he and his wife live in Cincinnati, Ohio, where he serves as Vice President of Government Affairs at the Water Sports Industry Association after enjoying a years-long career as an aide to former Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam and former Tennessee Senator Bob Corker. Lee, such an honor to have you on College Town Talk today. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm so excited to, uh, to join you today and to talk about 
uh, one of the greatest loves of my life, and that's Tennessee Tech University. <laughs> well, Lee, I won't tell your wife you said that, but <laughs> you have made an impact here at Tennessee Tech from your time as SGA president, your service as student trustee, and of course, winning the Dairy Berry Award. And you even served as video coordinator for Tech Athletics. So you've been there, you've done that. When you think about all that you accomplished in your time here, what makes you most proud? Uh, you know, I, I think what makes me the most proud of my time at Tennessee Tech is uh, the, the relationships that I built while I was there uh, with both students and faculty. Um, I frequently called uh, those people my family while I was there, and I, I truly meant it. Um, that none of the uh, things that we were able to accomplish as a student body or as a Tennessee Tech family could have happened. It, it, that none of those could have happened uh, unless we were just all bought into the idea of makes, making something great. Uh, so I, what I look back on the most now is just all of those relationships uh, that were formed and that I still keep in touch with so many of those people and their regular parts of my life, even today. Well, Lee, it's hard to believe that it's been uh, more than a decade since you graduated, but I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but you've been an engaged alumnus. You've stayed in touch in the years since. Uh, you've seen the changes and the growth that this university and Cookville uh, have experienced, whether it's the new storefronts that line the street in Cookville's west side, or the completion of Centennial Plaza outside the University Center, even turning the old Varsity Theater into the home of the Crawford Alumni Center. Uh, talk with us about some of those changes. What have you seen that stands out to you? Well, I mean, truly a loaded question because there's just been so much. And it, as you said, it, it seems like forever ago and, and also just yesterday that I was roaming uh, the campus myself trying to get to class and and uh, and beat beat you to class on some of those, Jonathan. But we all know that you were you were the first one in some of those classrooms. So I, you know, you had a better attendance <laughs> record than me. Uh, but it ha there has been a lot of change. And you know, I was fortunate to be at Tennessee Tech during a time when uh, so many projects that had been under planning for uh, frankly decades were really coming to fruition. And we got to see that change. And we got to we got to be in rooms where we talked about. Uh, you know, leaving an you know leaving an impact that would last uh, you know multiple generations after after we were there. I, I would say um, you know the ones that stand out the most to me now when I visit through uh, when I come through Cookville and visit is uh, obviously some of the infrastructure projects that we were able to get started uh, when I was a student, and now to see those uh, being completed, such as the the new uh, Mark Burnett Gymnasium, the workout facility, the student student recreation center, uh, those have such a tremendous impact on your uh, on your eyes when you drive through Cookville now. The new science center buildings, the, the total landscape of the campus itself just. Uh, looks dramatically different than when we were there, but it's also something I'm just incredibly proud of, and and always love to point to point out the window to my wife when we're driving. It's like, oh, that that was that wasn't there when I was, and this is this is how we got that accomplished. Uh, so that those are just great stories to share when when visiting now. Now, Lee, you obviously have a reward, rewarding career today in Ohio, but before you left us here in Tennessee, you spent many years working for some of the most powerful figures in our state, including as an aide on Governor Bill Haslam's campaign and as field director for U.S. Senator Bob Corker. Just saying those words makes me um, completely unable to do you justice in this interview. Tell us about those years in the political arena. Do you miss it at all? And maybe how did it prepare you for your work that you're doing today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100 percent miss the miss those days. Uh, you know, it's it's the a really funny quote when it's like no one tells you when you're in the good old days. Uh, you know, that's how I look back on some of those experiences. Um, I was just so fortunate after graduating from Tennessee Tech with my master's to uh, work for two incredible leaders in our great state. And I learned a lot of life lessons from both Governor Haslam and Senator Corker. Um, got to work alongside a lot of uh, a lot of folks during that time that uh, also helped helped me learn uh, uh, how to uh, how to deal with challenges that I work through today in my in my current job. Uh, so I, I would I would say that, you know, those what I miss most from those days was, uh, you know, we, we were getting to interact with uh, citizens from around our great state. I'd frequently get to come back into the Upper Cumberland 
and and work through uh, and work through issues alongside President Phil Oldham and others because, as you both know, um, Tennessee Tech truly is, in my opinion, a, a hub for the Upper Cumberland, not just Cookville, not just Putnam County. I grew up in a county that that bordered uh, that bordered Putnam County, and I can tell you that when we even when we wanted to go into for groceries or a night out for dinner, uh, we come through that city and you see the impact that Tennessee Tech has on so many people. Uh, so I, yes, I miss those days. What I miss most though is engaging with, uh, with citizens and helping uh, resolve problems that they may be experiencing because truly, that's where you that's for me the greatest impact is is when you can you can help others and just see how that changes uh, changes their outlook so yeah i miss those days for sure well, even as uh, you say you miss those days, I know you've got a, a a great important role that you're doing now in Cincinnati as Vice President of Government Affairs for the Water Sports Industry Association. And uh, in, in that capacity, you've really become one of the foremost voices uh, in the boating and marine industry today. In fact, in 2022, you were named to the boating industry 40 under 40 list. And they published an interview with you where they asked you about your heroes and you listed your mom. Uh, I know that had to mean so much to her. She's obviously a big part of the success you've experienced in your career and in life. Uh, how has her influence and support contributed to where you are today? Yeah, I, I mean, you said it, you said it beautifully uh, there, Jonathan, but I mean, I grew up with an in-house cheerleader, uh, no matter what I was doing, whether that was uh, sports, uh, the classroom, uh, student government, uh, or uh, whatever else it may be. Um, she was always, she's always, always has been in my corner uh, supporting me. And, and that makes a, that makes a real difference on uh, certainly a child's life, but uh, just uh, your life in general, as you, as you grow up and you, and you work through problems and having an outlet for someone to talk to, to how to handle challenges. I, I couldn't, I uh, couldn't have been successful without my parents uh, being a, a great, uh, a, a great foundation uh, for me that that's that's for certain well, lee on behalf of moms everywhere uh, there is no mom on earth that wouldn't appreciate that being the view of their son so i know your mom continues to be proud of you now we like to end each interview with the very same question so are you ready absolutely okay what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Now you can't duplicate. You've already said like fifty different things, but you got to pick one. Yeah, um, I, I think the way uh, Tennessee Tech has, has impacted my life, um, it, it instilled uh, it, it instilled a, truly a, a vision of addressing any challenge or project that I'm working on with the mantra of leaving it better than I found it. I think that's what Tennessee Tech does a tremendous job uh, at instilling in their students is this community where you can uh, you can figure out who you are as a person, what you want to do with your life professionally. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they, they instill values where you want to see something be successful and you want to take uh, you want to take whatever project or um, or act, whatever it is that you're engaged in, and you want to make it better, and you want to leave it better than when you found it. And I think that's the core principle that I took away from Tennessee Tech, uh, from all of the projects that we were engaged in, whether that was we created the solo fund for Student Government Association, or voted on some of those uh, new buildings that I referenced uh, that stand today on campus. Um, the principle of leaving something better than you found it uh, is something that I will carry with me uh, for the rest of my life. And I have Tennessee Tech to thank for that. Wow, Lee, your passion as a change maker. I know that our listeners can sense um, how absolutely aggressive you are in making this world a better place. And we appreciate all you've done for Cookville and all you continue to do uh, throughout uh, your areas of expertise. Thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation. We 
want to sincerely thank Dr. Monique Ducton and Lee Gatz for being our guests today on College Town Talk. We certainly do. And thanks to all of you for listening each week. Be sure to check out our website at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk, where you can listen to previous episodes of the show and even send us your feedback and suggestions. Join us again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville, Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.